the Brexit party turned their backs to an anthem that the United Kingdom actually opted out of in the Lisbon Treaty. One of the reasons why the European Constitution was defeated in France and in the Netherlands and right across Europe, and it was repackaged as the Lisbon Treaty and Forster anyway in true democratic EU style, is because it included all these attributes and trappings of nationhood, a flag, an anthem, presidents. It's quite right to turn your back on that. The EU knows he's serious about no deal, knows the only way to avert it is to get a deal that's credibly going to pass through Parliament so that's proposed by the EU. It's certainly not the sort of prorogation that we were hearing about months ago, the sort of prorogation right over the edge of that 31st of October deadline. It's actually quite sad to see someone like Jeremy Corbyn, who, let's face it, probably voted Leave, being pushed around by so many different interests within his party. He's not appearing as a leader today. He's appearing as sort of a bedraggled follower. I think it is ridiculous to say that, for example, voting Leave is a little parochial, inward-looking, isolationist thing, and perhaps if you'd be willing to date Brexit is, you wouldn't think that it is. There is not a deal that includes the backstop that can pass through Parliament. If the European Union wants a deal, which it does, if the UK wants a deal, which it does, then the European Union will have to move. And their intransigence is really quite sad and political. And it's clear that they're not acting in the interests of the people of Europe, and it's about time that they should. Attlee did it when he was putting forward his new uh, raft of nationalisation reforms. There's plenty of precedent for something like this to be done. And it, it will enable us to take back control, as you rightly say, over our laws, over our money, over our borders, over our trade. We get complete control over our tariff schedules with the whole world. So we'll be able to set our own tariffs on goods that come into the country. We'll be able to slash tariffs on agriculture, for example, cut costs for people buying food, buying clothing, buying footwear. These essentials that people, particularly the poorest people in the country, really rely on. We'll be able to make those goods cheaper uh, by ourselves without having to go and beg to Brussels to do it for us. The Conservative Party, when it came to government in 2010, was left with a note from the Labour Party saying there's no money left. For every £4 that the government was spending, it was borrowing £1. Now it's only borrowing one out of every £34 it spends. That's a massive uh, shoring up of our financial capability. The EU has some of the highest food standards in the world. I think it was because of the uh, movement across the EU that we all ended up eating horse just a few years ago. It's ridiculous. It's a fantasy to say that the European Union protects food standards. It's a stark contrast to the leaflet that we received during the referendum in every home, saying all the dangers that are going to happen, the immediate recession, the immediate job losses that simply didn't materialise. It's kind of nice to have a government that believes a bit more positively in this country, this sort of keep calm and carry on attitude that we're going to see. And sorry, as for the baseless smears and slander that we heard earlier, that I think a lot of people are going to be a, be a little bit taken aback by that. This is someone who was elected twice in London, a decade kidding? after he made the out-of-context quotes that you pulled up. This is someone I, who I, voted I, 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 against I'm the majority sorry, of, to, parliament, of his party to repeal Section 28. He's I someone who's in favour of an amnesty for illegal migrants. He's because probably the most socially sense. liberal Conservative that Prime Minister we have ever correct. had. Right, this is someone to, yeah, who's I'm not the caricature you're there, trying both to... Of you. Right, I'm going to peddle some more optimism in mine, in the infamous words of Jeremy Hunt. Um, Boris wins. We attempt a renegotiation with Europe. Initially, they say no, but because we're leaving no deal on the table as that credible threat, eventually, at the last possible minute, some concessions are granted, particularly around the Irish backstop. Parliament has actually twice voted for a no-deal Brexit in terms of uh, the European Withdrawal Act that means it's the legal default that we leave at the end of October. Well, the reason why prorogation works is it's the current law that we leave with no deal. That's what MPs have voted for, whether they like it or not. For our listeners just waking up at whatever, 11 minutes past seven on a Saturday morning, can you explain what that's all about and why it's significant? Sure. GATT 24-5B is a mechanism by which two countries can continue to trade or can trade on zero tariff terms. And 5C, all that um, sets out is that reciprocation is required, which Boris Johnson has acknowledged and said repeatedly throughout the course of this campaign. But the president of the National Farmers Union says that it'll be a glut of too much food and that'll be bad, bad for farmers because of increased competition from the rest of the world. You get scare stories now coming from Remainers from just about every angle 
angle, and they're totally contradictory. We saw this level of hysteria before the referendum, and people simply didn't buy it. And the country's not going to buy it a second time, no matter how hysterical it gets. That number is correct, gross, and the and right. the net right. number, yes. and the yeah. net and number is about ten number. and a half billion year, okay. a year. That's a massive amount, ten and a half billion pounds a year. We're throwing away to Brussels that we could be spending in this country. If you're going to deny that as a market, we've had the last three years where we have a prime minister who voted Remain, who during the general election in 2017 couldn't bring herself to say that she'd vote Leave in a future referendum. We've had that sort of stuttering leadership for the last three years. It's no wonder we haven't properly uh, managed to get stuck into these negotiations, haven't properly extracted ourselves from the European Union, haven't left deadline after deadline. Having someone who believes in this project, who's willing to fight for it, who's willing to use the same tactics that Remainers have been using in terms of parliamentary procedure and all of that, we're going to have a clear deadline, we're going to have a clear renegotiation and we'll be out by the end of October. He's someone who has a personality and people trust. People like a politician who doesn't try and mince their words, who doesn't pretend he's anything he's not. And that's who Boris is and he's bringing back a certain legitimacy to politics that has been missing for the last few years. We're not going to have robotic premiership with Boris. We're going to have something a lot more authentic. And I think that's what a lot of people are crying out for. There have been incredible, unprecedented steps, aided and abetted by an, an, a far from impartial speaker, that have been delivered by Remainers in Parliament. So it's about time that Leavers actually don't stop bringing a spoon to a gunfight. It's time that Leavers in Parliament turn up with proper weapons. These aren't actually unprecedented things. Clement Attlee prorogues Parliament back in 1948 to overcome the will of Parliament in order to force through his agenda. Similarly, in 2010, in the Canadian Parliament, Stephen Harper did the same thing in order to... He was running a minority government at the time and overcame an opposition coalition against him and won the next election. These are not things that are out of bounds or ridiculous. It's interesting to see how that Remain-Leave divide within the party isn't necessarily a left-right divide. France, particularly Italy, these are countries that are not particularly stable right now. Germany's teetering on the brink of recession. A big shock like that is not what anyone in the European Union wants. It's not particularly what the United Kingdom wants either, so there's a sensible way to avoid it. I think the most interesting part of that whole discussion was the bit right at the beginning, when they heard the words said by Theresa May that we're not afraid to leave with no deal, and they took that, they were um, shocked, surprised and afraid of that notion. That was our strongest card and the idea that we've now taken that away is such a sad, sad uh, position to be in because it really detracts our negotiating hey. What happened last time? We joined a common market and through a series of, I think, five treaties, we entered into deeper and closer integration. We now have five presidents, we have a spitz and Kandidaten system with presidential debates I for mean, the look, president listen, of Europe. If the Conservative Party wants to undo the untold damage done to their brand amongst Brexiteers over the last year, they need to change leadership, they need to move on, they need to get a new top team and a team who understands what that result meant, who believes in that result, who voted for that result and who can deliver it.